Hi there, and for this video, we're going to have a full basic tutorial on how to understand and use the features on the Exodus wallet. Now, first off, if you haven't already, let's go over to their main site and install the wallet themselves. And so right now we are in the Exodus.com's homepage. It shows us a download button for Windows, but I want to show you the other versions as well over in the download section. So we have to just go over here to the top right on download, and you can see that we have three different options. Now, each version has their own advantage. Obviously, with the mobile, you can monitor and transact with your Exodus wallet anywhere on the go, but you cannot access your Trezor hardware. However, you can monitor it on the mobile. On the Web3 wallet, it is a Chrome and a Brave web browser extension, and it lets you interact with different platforms while you're browsing on the web. So you don't have to switch to your app all the time. We can use the Web3 wallet. However, for this video, we'll be discussing Exodus for the desktop. Once we click on the drop down here on download Exodus, we can see that we have five different versions. We have four Windows, two for Mac, and two for Linux. I am on a Windows device, so I will be using this one. Once it's in your downloads folder, all we need to do is install. Once you open this on your downloads folder, it will automatically install and create a shortcut. As in my case, it has already been installed, so it is telling me to simply open the app. And so this is the default landing page for the desktop software. We can import a wallet if you already have an existing wallet from a different computer. And if we click on this, it will ask Exodus to restart and input our recovery phrase. And this is what it would look like. Now I do not have an existing wallet on any other device, so I will simply go and create a new wallet. And the way to do that is to simply quit this, reopen Exodus, and we have to go to the top right on the settings icon to click on that. Now it says backup, but what it actually means is we're setting up a password for our wallet. Obviously for our wallets, we would need to have a good amount of security, especially if it's a shared computer. So let me just make a password. Then we'll have to type our password again. And now we can view our 12 word passphrase. Understand your secret phrase. So if you click on this box that says show secret recovery phrase, you will see all of the words in your secret phrase. You even have an option to print your phrase if you have a printer attached to your device. Now what I personally recommend is to simply write it down somewhere, store it in a journal or laminate it perhaps to keep it safe. And these two things are the most important things for our wallets. The password so we can access the wallet, but this recovery phrase is when we're moving to a different device. It might ask me a question like input the six word in your phrase or any different question that can easily be answered if you have the different phrases and their corresponding number. So you have to make sure that this is safe because if someone knows your recovery phrase, they have the potential to access your wallet. So keep it safe. And immediately after viewing your phrase, once you click done, it will confirm if you have saved down your phrase. In my case, let me just... And now my backup is complete. You can reset your password anytime, but of course you would have to input your old password. And because there is a human help desk, they may be able to help you if you completely forgot your password or have no way to reset it along with your recovery phase. But once that's done, we can head over to security. Here in additional security, we have the option to auto lock the program if you leave it open for a set amount of time. And here are the different options that we have. For the purposes of this video, I will not be using the auto lock feature, however, and we can move on to the different features. Now let's go over here to personalize and over here on the top of the different personalization options, we have set currency. Now by default, it is on USD. However, if we scroll here, there are a number of different currencies that you can display as your preferred local currency. You can create and manage your portfolio. You can update the software on every startup. And by default, the share anonymous activity is left on to help Exodus improve their software and their other products. I will just switch that off for the purpose of this video. 
here are some additional UI settings that you can mess around with. And once we're done with that, let's go back to the homepage. Now, I'd like to briefly mention that we can install a Trezor bridge if you have a Trezor device. And this is what I mean by a Trezor device. It is a physical wallet, it's a hardware wallet, an actual device that you plug into your computer to access it. Obviously, it is an added layer of security because it keeps your passphrase and your password offline. And you can link that with your Exodus because they are working together. And the way to link that is by going to your app into the devices and install the Trezor Bridge. It will then take us to their main site and you can download the standalone Trezor Bridge. Remember to install it in the same install folder as your Exodus wallet. Now, I personally do not have a Trezor device, but once you've installed the bridge and you simply plug in your Trezor device to your computer, Exodus will automatically detect that and it might just take a few minutes to link in, but will show you two separate wallets. Now, obviously it is for storing your assets on a physical device. Think of it as a bank and you cannot access your Trezor wallet if it is not plugged in your computer. Now let's go over to our portfolio. Here are the different assets and how we have interacted with them over time. I personally do not have a portfolio here, but this is our portfolio on the top left hand side. And here are the different currencies. Now let's go over to our wallet. As you can see here on the top are the different supported currencies. You can click on these arrows to see the various supported ones. You can even add more if you prefer. However, I will not be adding any. Now, before I show you any sort of transaction, there is an important feature here on our wallet settings, and we have to click on these three dots here on the right hand side and show advanced options. Now, you might want to tick on the multiple addresses. This is simply an extra layer of security so that in every transaction, whether you're sending or receiving, the wallet addresses will change all the time. So it will never be the same. That will help greatly with your online privacy. So I will simply leave this on. Now let's go over on how to receive on our Exodus wallet. Now, for example, let's head over to our Tether USD here on the top, and you can also refresh the currency to make sure that the prices are updated. Again, let me stress, we have to be very particular with what network we're using when making transactions. So before we send or receive, let us select the network we're using. Now we can use the Ethereum network or ERC20. However, it is rather expensive. But for the purpose of this video, I will be using the Ethereum network. And so let's click on receive. It shows us that we are on the Ethereum network. This is our address. We can scan the QR code if we have a different wallet on our phone. But for this video, I will be copying this address. I'm going to head over to Bybit. This is the withdrawal page on Bybit. We are transferring USDT, paste the wallet, and we are going to select the Ethereum network. Make sure that everything matches set the amount and then confirm in possibly less than three minutes the currency that you sent should be in your exodus wallet now let's remember that each network has its own separate address and since let's say we were making a transaction on the ethereum network we would see that amount here and not on if say we were using the bnb chain now let's go over and try to send Right now, I'm on Bybit making a deposit form. Of course, the same network through ERC20. We have the address here. I have copied it. Let me paste that over in our Exodus sending form. And as you can see, earlier with receiving, the gas fees are automatically calculated. But on sending, we have to manually make sure that we have a layer one gas token before we can send. As you can see on this notification, to make a transaction, you need at least 0 0.0014 Ethereum since we are on the Ethereum network. Now we can automatically swap that. However, that would be expensive. So what we actually have to do is to make sure that in our wallets, let's say we do want to use the ERC20 network. So let's go over to Ethereum. We would have to receive Ethereum, say from your other wallets and have a set amount. So we have tokens as layer one coins every time we're making a transaction. So in our example case, I would need a bit of Ethereum before I can send my tether through the Ethereum network to another wallet. All right, now let's talk about swapping the coins as it was an option offered to us when we were trying to send. If we go over here to the top, we can see swap. 
just as I'm getting in, it already reminds us that it does go through third-party providers. Because this is cross-chain, you don't need to specify the networks. However, as convenient as that may be, it is also rather pricey because it goes through third-party providers. So let's say I want to swap my USDT to Ethereum as what we were offered earlier, it sends the tether to a third party provider and then the third party goes back and sends us Ethereum and using the same amount of fees. So the more cost efficient way to do this is to simply go to your wallet and send that to like Binance or perhaps Bybit and then convert it there and send it back into your Exodus wallet. It sounds rather inconvenient but you can save a lot in the long run especially if you're making frequent transactions. Now let's say you want to directly buy that ethereum instead so if you go over here to buy and sell it doesn't show us that it uses third-party providers but buying crypto and swapping them within exodus goes through exactly the same process it is pricey so once again it is much more cost efficient if we do the transactions from another platform say binance or bybit or any others now I am missing a few features here on my version of Exodus and I believe this is due to some features being region locked so I have no access to the help desk or the other features such as compounding and I have no option to add those features as well. What I do have is the rewards system where we can stake some of our currencies. And just to note, staking rewards are called APY. Not all currencies have staking rewards, and the ones that do are not necessarily supported by Exodus. But the ones that are supported, we can see right here in the staking rewards section. There are only quite a few. Now to calculate rewards, we just click on this button here on the top, calculate rewards. And let's say we are depositing Solana. As you can see, this is the amount, this is the term in months. Staking, I suppose you could liken it to making a time deposit in a bank. However, the process isn't entirely the same. And of course, I would advise you to do your own research when dealing with the individual coins that you would like to stake. This is the same page where you can claim your awards. And once you do, you can simply put that back in if you so prefer. And the last thing I would like to cover here is if you have Exodus Mobile. So let's go over here to the settings icon and let's go click on devices and you can see sync devices. If you click sync, you'll have to unlock your wallet. You have to type in your password. But for the purposes of this video, I will simply explain that. Let's say you sync your mobile device. It allows you to access and still make transactions on your Exodus wallet, but it does not let you access your Trezor wallet since there hasn't been a way for a Trezor device to be connected to your phone. You can, however, view your Trezor wallet balance through your Exodus mobile, but you won't be able to interact with it. So in summary, you can see the balance of both wallets, but you can only interact with the Exodus wallet itself. Now for other features, we may be covering it on a separate video, but for now, this should all be it. Now I hope this video was helpful, if it was, maybe leave a like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of our new tips. Thank you for watching and see you again next time.